Hi, I'm Jeff Sanford. We're here at the Canadian Business Leadership Forum 2008. We're here with Richard Florida, the author of Who's Your City? And uh, New Migrant to Canada. You talked about what we're seeing in markets right now and kind of the burn-off in this financial finance economy. Uh, you suggested that's not really real wealth. You talked about some opportunities for Canada. So I guess the question is in two parts. What is the origin of real wealth and what can Canada kind of, how can it play to, uh, play to the opportunities that are arising right now? Well, I think like everybody, we're all kind of nervous and upset and worried about the financial crisis. Yeah. And, you know, that's still unfolding. I was yeah. saying today, I, I read my Dr. Doom, Norio Rubini, yes. who's, who's now predicting, you know, a financial panic that will close financial centers yeah. around the world. And, yeah. and he's you know, been dead on And so he's far. been more right than Just wrong. Really. So, yeah. But I think, I think what we're learning is that the finance sector actually took up a big share of national wealth. Yeah. It kind of got out of whack with the, with the fundamentals in the real economy. Sure. And, and we can blame financial innovation for that. We can blame yeah. people, in, certainly in the States, less so right. in Canada, that took on too much debt and financed consumption out of debt. Yeah. Uh, but the point is, it, what's happened has happened. Yeah. And, and we're not going to see the financial sector rebound like that. Probably, you know, I'm thinking about the, the Great Depression. Yeah. It probably took 40, 50 years for the financial sector, you know, the days of Wall Street yeah. and Greed and Gordon yeah. Gecko to get back on that. Yeah. You know, from, from the days of Morgan and Rockefeller to the days of Greed and Gordon Gecko. So we're going to see a real <laughs> definancialization. Yeah, I, I think what we're going to see is a, 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 maybe a back to the basics or back to the real economy. Sure. And back to where, you know, real wealth comes from. That's yeah. from, you know, investing in people. Yeah. Uh, investing in companies, building yeah. rather than trading, which is yeah. the, the kind of way we, we like to think about it at the Martin Prosperity Institute. Yeah. And, and I think what's really interesting is that means harnessing you know, this factor that I call human creativity. Yeah. Um, whether that's in an innovative startup company in biomedicine or software, or whether that's in arts and culture and entertainment, sure. or whether that's building new kinds of service businesses. Yeah. And you know, one thing just in Canada that we've seen is this building of kind of incredibly interesting uh, service businesses, sure. whether that's the Four Seasons, you know, that revolutionized hotels in, in yeah. its day, or Umbra, you know, combining design, yeah. combining with design with really cool products. Sure. So, so my hunch is, um, and what will happen, I think, over time, I think that that Canada has to position itself for that. You know, okay. Fareed Zakaria, the the great. Uh, International editor of Newsweek, sure. American, says, you know, we're moving to a post-American world. Yeah. He doesn't mean that's an un-American world. Some people yeah. hear that and they say, oh, no, he means that, that the United States is going to have to be more a part of a global, multipolar, no longer just unilateral. Sure. And, and I think, and he talks about the rise of what he calls the small states. It's not yeah. a word that I really like, but he means countries like Australia or Holland or Sweden or Denmark or New Zealand and Canada. And what I think is the small states are going to have to provide more leadership. And, you know, my own kind of being an American who lives yeah. in Canada, what country is the closest to the yeah. United States in culture and Absolutely. attitude and geography? So Canada kind of has this incredible opportunity to kind of partner with the U.S., show the way out. And I think we have these two incredible mega regions, yeah. the one kind of that stretches from Toronto west to Kitchener-Waterloo. Sure. Out east past Buffalo, Rochester, out to Montreal, and then Cascadia that runs from Vancouver to Seattle and Portland, Oregon. Yeah. And, and Canada has this incredible opportunity to become you know, more vibrant, more exciting, yeah. encourage more immigration, and really position these mega regions as uh, incredible go-getters in the coming years. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you talked about uh, the need to make a, a service economy jobs better jobs, and that's that's interesting. That's not something you hear many people talk about, but I know a lot of people in the service industry. <laughs> I think a lot of people agree with you. Well, if you know, thirty percent of us work in the creative part of the thirty-five percent work in the creative economy, creative class. Yeah. Another twenty percent, maybe even a little less now in Canada yeah. and North in the United States, work in manufacturing. That means we're close to 45 plus percent working in services. And by services, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, people who do food processing, people who work in hotels, landscaping, cut hair, work in retail trade. Yeah. The high tech stuff I call the creative jobs, along yeah. with entertainment and professions. But boy, oh boy, you know, if you think about it, those people make a third of what somebody in the creative economy makes. Yeah half of what somebody in manufacturing makes. Yeah. So that's 45% of our workforce. If we're going to create better jobs, higher wages, 
give people the money to consume and buy things as we recover, the jobs we have to make better. Of course, we want to make manufacturing jobs as good as we can and stop them from moving offshore. And we want to protect the small number of farm jobs we have and have our yeah. agricultural be great. Yeah. But 45% of our workforce is in these service jobs. Yeah. Those jobs are temporary. They're highly irregular. They don't pay well. So my hunch is the country and the region just like the United States and Canada and some of the European countries made manufacturing good jobs yeah. after World War II right. by investing in them and increasing productivity and supporting higher wages and better benefits. Yeah. And the I New think deal, we, basically. The New Deal, the New yeah. Deal and the social contract. I think we can push up. Now, I don't want to say that we should do that falsely. Sure. We shouldn't just impose, you know, yeah. you have to make this much money even if you sit on your butt. Yeah. Uh, I think what we want to do is increase the productivity and innovation and creativity. One of the cool things about giving a speech, so many people came up to me just afterwards and said, you know, I work in a service business or I work in manufacturing. And you're right. If we're going to compete with low-wage competitors offshore in India yeah. for business services and China for manufacturing, we're going to have to increase the creative quotient, increase the innovation quotient, increase the design quotient, do it better. The cool thing about service jobs, though, which is really important, yeah. is it's easy to understand how you can offshore making a car sure. or making a TV set and then ship it back to North America. But it's, I don't think in our life we're going to offshore the guy who cuts your hair <laughs> you know, or, or the person who kind of fixes your lawn or fixes yeah. your house. Or when you go to a hotel, yeah. those people are going to have to be there. Yeah. So those jobs are, in a sense, place-bound. They're local jobs. So I think that's the great transition we have to make. My yeah. hunch is... The, the city or the region or the country that can figure out how to up those service jobs, not just in wages, that'll spur demand, but in creative content and innovation, make those continuous improvement jobs, like the best factories, like those sure. really, really innovative Toyota factories do with car production. You can make those continuous improvement jobs. The, the, the example I like, you know, yeah. we're sitting here in, in the Mars building where yeah. my office is. And in most buildings, they have what we used to call a janitor. Yeah. The janitor would come around and clean the waste bucket and, and make sure the desk was clean. And what if that group of people were almost like improvement engineers? And they were constantly thinking about and huh. working in teams to make the building more energy efficient, uh, economically more efficient, make sure the technology works better. That's exactly what the best car companies did. They said to the shop floor workers, uh, we want you not only to put the bolts on the car, we want you to go in, in teams and figure out how to make this more efficient. What they found is they not only came up with new processes, they actually were the leaders in environmental stuff. Because sure. they said, no, no, the paint's leaking here, toxics are coming out yeah. here. If we just clean this up, we can be both more effective and environmentally sustainable. Yeah. I think turning service jobs into the same kind of process is an enormous, enormous avenue we can take for the future. Absolutely. That's something we did with manufacturing jobs last generation. We can do it with service center jobs yep. as well. Thank you very much for your time. Oh, thank you. It's been a pleasure Amazing. being with you guys today. Great. Thank you very much. I'm Jeff Sanford, reporting from the Canadian Business Leadership Forum 2008.